Now we will talk about some technical aspects and uh, maybe how to solve some problems. And uh, the first problem here from the point of technique is just in the first line and uh, it is this. Why? It is just the range of a hand. You have to play a ninth and not all the pianists who are able to play this sonata wonderful are able to have this range at the beginning. But you have, please show it. Yeah, maybe play one bar before and play it with both hands. Yes, it looks so easy. And um, well, what could we do if we play it and we cannot reach this? It's just not only the nines which has to be played, but also the voices within. Uh, normally, and I knew a, a lot of uh, pianists and I had it in some courses where they just play uh, an arpeggio. Uh, also in other parts of Beethoven where such things happen. Uh, but I, would, I wouldn't do it because we have this fortato. It should be a strong and uh, accent and it's like in an orchestra the chord should be together. Um, my proposal would be to leave out a note. Mm -hmm. I know this is, um, well, one can discuss and one can be very angry about this, but uh, listen. It's the C1 which is missing, but you have the chords together. I would prefer this solution, but it's just a proposal. I no, we should never leave out a note in Beethoven's composition, but here it would be the solution for a small hand, better than an arpeggio. Um, this is the first one, but this has nothing to do with technique, but with the range of the hand. The next problem is, uh, I think, the trill. Can you just show it? The problem there is you have to play the drill with 4-5 and you have to hold the other note, mm. and which of course is a tension for 4 and 5. And um, I think one of the solutions you could practice would be take a little pedal and leave the note. So then you have these notes you have still there, but four and five are a little bit more free. Can you try this? Just for demonstration, because you can do the original. Yes. And then, of course, if you really want to practice it as a student, my advice would be really practice uh, trills with four and five. We later need it also in the last Beethoven sonata. So you can take a fifth and then in other keys you play it with four or five. And uh, this would be a kind of good preparation for this moment. And also to play a trill with four or five and hold the other uh, notes of the chord. So, yeah, can you show this? Yes, and then in D sharp. Yes, and so on. Yes, yes, and maybe also have a uh, more range in the chord. Maybe you play this. Yeah, but sh such things there is no secret. Mm -hmm. It is uh, you must practice it, <laughs> learning by doing, and uh, well. Uh, also, uh, we have to discuss which kind of expression you want there. How many notes we have. Uh, one could imagine with five notes, uh, like a Doppelschlag, can you show this? Yes, why not? 
especially when it comes at the end. Uh, the next step would be seven, like you do. Can you show it? Yes, and if you want to play a virtuos thriller, you can do even with a nine note. Okay. Yeah, but I think there it is too much because we have this kind of dolce cantabile andante. I would prefer five notes. And well, if you try and try and try and it doesn't work with four five, of course you could also do this. You take a pedal and then you change here to th two three or two four whatever, and then here you have a you have a small jump. Mm -hmm. But I think if you are a young pianist and you want to study this, just study four and five and have in mind seven notes. Can you show it again? Wonderful, wonderful. Um, then the next one, you told me where is your most difficult T. Please show us. Say it in Japanese. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because the the jump in time, yeah, and the jump without accent. Yeah. Uh, can you show us? Yeah, I think this is perfect because. I think one, one should not try to um, be completely in tempo because if you then you give get the accent on the D flat mm -hmm. and uh, it's still a relaxed variation and it's andante uh, so I think there is no uh, use to um, to hurry up just take the time can you do it again wonderful and if you want to practice such a jump, mm -hmm. uh, I think it is sometimes very helpful if you do the difficulty more, even more difficult. So do the jump with two octaves. Yeah, can you show? Yes. This is a thing which you can also use in, in several Etudes, instead of you play one octave more, like this, and then the rest is easy. Okay, so let's see the next thing. Um, well, these are the, the big jumps in the third variation, uh, second variation, sorry, can you do just this one? And, well, my proposal for this would be first also play se hand separate and um, then, for example, do such exercises. Um, two octaves jump in the right hand. Uh, can you try? Yeah, and do in the left hand. things or um, sorry yes and also you can take out some bars and play in double tempo so that it is really difficult uh, maybe can you just do this very mm -hmm. fast So also here you could play exaggerated difficulty with the two uh, octaves jump. And then this one, the scale in staccato from sforzato going down to pianissimo. Mm -hmm. 
My advice would be, uh, if you practice scales, do exactly what happens here. We have a staccato, a, a sforzato, and then followed by a decrescendo. So you do this. Can you try? Yes. But a staccato until the end. Very good. Yeah. Good. Yeah. And uh, then um, also in parts. One more and one more. Can you try? Good. 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 Then, well, the next thing is um, here the trill with the melody. Can you just play it? Yeah. Here I would also take out uh, the difficulty. Uh, mostly play such things in C major that you have just the white. Uh, keys and don't have to think about black keys mm -hmm. and maybe play an octave trill like this yeah, try that. And, and then yeah and then also practice this trill with a crescendo and decrescendo. Yes. And sometimes here we have also a second finger. Um, uh, so you could do the same with a second finger. Well, an octave with two five is too difficult, but uh, you can do this. Yeah, try this. Yeah. Very good. I know you can do it. <laughs> and then. Well, second movement, we have the thirds. Uh, and the fingering of uh, Mare Piraya, I think it's just perfect. It really works. Can you try? Yeah. And can you show it very slowly? Yeah. Well, one has to see there is a written legato, but I think the approach should be uh, mostly uh, kind of martellato, mm -hmm. to bring it out. Mm -hmm. Can you show? Yes. And here also I would practice two notes, then two, uh, three, four and five. Can you show this? Good. Good. Okay. Um, there I have a proposal which is not written in the fingering, but um, I would uh, do a kind of cross fingering here. Three, two, uh, three, one, two, four, four, two, four, and one, five. Yes, uh, which you can use, for example, in uh, C major sonata, opus two. You get this. Five, one. Yes, and then three, two. And then with three two. Yes. Try it first. Yes, it works. Mm -hmm. And to prepare this, you can play a scale five one three two. Yeah. So this is just a proposal if somebody 
isn't happy with the fingering which is written there, but I think it's perfect and you do it perfect. Okay, then here at the end, I think very important to have a kind of martellato sound, uh, very strong to reach the fortissimo, and uh, so it should be a little bit like this. So if you practice this, really exaggerate. Uh, so you practice a scale and you do this. Yeah, maybe even with a little pedal. Yeah, very good, very good. And um, then we have this kind of in the funeral march. And um, I think... Uh, to help a little bit with the arm. Yes. Uh, yes, this is the proposal, 5-2 of Mare Pereira. I would use 5-1. But it's important that you have this crescendo. And um, then, well, I think this is difficult. In both hands, this semi quavers. Can you just show it? Yeah. I would uh, practice it. Um, always holding the um, upper melody. Can you try? Yeah. And then also play it with uh, relaxed notes, leggero. Yes, yes. And of course you can take out such a... Um, uh, you could do this. And can go over the whole keyboard. Can you just take it in uh, C major? Yeah, and you can start... Slowly, yeah, and then do two fast. Yes, yes, and so I would go on and on two, three, four. Then you have it. Mm -hmm. And after C major, do it in other keys, and then it will work. And here we have a beginning piano, uh, the moment we mentioned in the other uh, um, session. Uh, which is uh, kind of insp inspired by the pathetic sonata. But uh, here I think the touch is really... Um, that you don't have a lega uh, legato. Yeah, so. Yeah, so this Something like this. And of course, then with a little bit pedal and crescendo to the forte. Can you try? Very good, very good. Then also a problem is to hit the sforzati. Uh, the scale starts with a sforzato, which normally uh, um, doesn't happen. But here he writes it. So um, can you just show it? For this, I would practice scales also like this. Yeah, then it will work, I'm sure. And um, the end, the farewell, it must disappear in pianissimo. So at the end here... I think for this is it's also very important such touch that you it's like you're cleaning the keyboard from dust you don't do anything Wonderful. Wonderful. so 
if you do a technical program every day, uh, you have to always to change the articulation, play legato, play leggero, play staccato, and change the dynamics, play pianissimo, completely relaxed, and play as loud as possible. And, uh, but uh, the drill at the beginning, the jumps, and um, the uh, um, sforzati here are some difficulties, but they are uh, possible to solve and uh, you do it. Thank you very much. Thank you.